Exercise 2126 just wants you to predict some major products for reactions with amides. And you'll notice that there aren't quite as many of these as there are for reactions for, with, for example, acid chlorides. The react these carboxylic acid derivatives are ordered in the homework according to their reactivity. First, acid halides. Second, acid anhydrides. Third, esters. Fourth and last, amides. Sort of in the category. There's also nitriles, which are sort of a category unto themselves. Okay, well, here we are kind of going to do a nucleophilic acyl substitution, kind of. You'll see this ultimately acts as a reducing agent in the presence of amides. In other words, it takes bonds to oxygen and replaces them with bonds to hydrogen. So that that is actually your product. You've taken the two bonds to oxygen and replaced them each with bonds to hydrogen. So you took an amide and you turn it into an amine. But how does that happen? Well, I mean, that's all you have to know for the synthesis, that if you take an amide and treat it with excess lithium aluminum hydride followed by water, you get an amine. But how does that happen? How would you remember that? How would you make it easier to remember that by understanding it? Well, the first step is exactly what you would think. The hydrogen from lithium aluminum hydride comes in and attacks. So remember, lithium aluminum hydride has that aluminum bonded to four hydrogens. The whole thing has a negative charge that's stabilized by the positive charge on lithium. The hydrogens are more electronegative than aluminum, so they act as nucleophiles. And the aluminum is slightly positive. We know that the carbonyl carbon here is slightly positive. It's not the most positive thing in the world because the lone pair on the nitrogen is allylic to that pi bond and contributes electron density towards it. But it's still electronegative, and we have a strong nucleophile here, a lithium aluminum hydride. So one of these hydrogens with its electrons, that's what a hydride is, hydrogen with two electrons, and so a negative charge, swoops in and attacks the carbonyl carbon, kicking the pi electrons up. So we end up with, after that nucleophilic attack, with a tetrahedral intermediate. And we also have something that we don't think of quite so often. We have the aluminum with the three hydrogens that's left, and the lithium floating around. So we have that that's left. Now, at this point, this oxygen with the full negative charge could just swoop right back down. But one other thing it can do is it can attack the aluminum. So this, and notice that here, this hydrogen we added is implied. So there's a hydrogen down here that in that tetrahedral intermediate. So if you notice, in this reaction, we ultimately get rid of this oxygen. But right now, it's a terrible leaving group. But it can, the oxygen can attack the slightly positive aluminum. And you end up forming this strange sort of molecule. with a bond between the oxygen and the aluminum. And this whole thing can act as a leaving group. So the nitrogen with its negative, or with its lone pair, feels the slightly positive charge here. After all, that carbon is bonded to two electronegative elements, pulling electron density away. And so it swoops in to form a pi bond and kicks that leaving group off. So it's loss of a leaving group. We've seen this many times, especially in imine formation, one that looks a lot like this. So you'd have a double bond now to this nitrogen, which has two hydrogens on it. That's four bonds altogether, so it's slightly positive. Now that means that the carbon bonded to it is a really strong electrophile. 
it's losing electron density to the nitrogen because of its electronegativity, but also because the nitrogen has the positive charge that it can use to attract, attract um, electron density toward itself. And so this molecule can react with a second equivalent of lithium aluminum hydride. Notice in the recipe that there's excess. So a second equivalent of lithium aluminum hydride can come in And this hydrogen, again, can function, well, I should say the hydride, the hydrogen with the two electrons, can function as a nucleophile and attack this imine, this sort of nitrogen version of a, a nitrogen version of a ketone or a carbonyl. So this imine, that would kick those electrons up toward the nitrogen to help stabilize the, the uh, positive charge there. And what we're left with is the amine. So the nitrogen with the two hydrogens, and we really ultimately added two hydrogens here. Remember, this hydrogen we added at first is still there in this intermediate, and in this we added this second one, so we added two hydrogens. We replaced the two bonds to oxygen with hydrogens. In other words, we reduced the molecule with lithium aluminum hydride, a strong reducing agent. So there is a sort of interesting and strange step where the lithium aluminum hydride bonds to the oxygen and altogether they act as a leaving group. And that's how the oxygen ultimately leaves in this reaction. So if you take an amide and you treat it with excess lithium aluminum hydride followed by water, you end up getting this, this amine. Okay, so next. In this one, in B, we have an acid chloride, which is very reactive. And so we know that the chlorine is going to be the leaving group, and we are treating it with a nucleophile, namely ammonia. Ammonia is the nitrogen version of water. Nitrogen bonded to just hydrogens. Almost as common in our solar system and in the, what, what we know of the universe. So really, it's just a nucleophilic acyl substitution. You can redraw that carbon skeleton just without the leaving group and replace it with the, with the nucleophile. Now you'll notice if you replace it with the nucleophile exactly as it is, the nitrogen with three hydrogens, the nitrogen will have four bonds and a full positive charge. So you can do a proton transfer to get rid of that positive charge, and the, thing, the base that's going to steal it is a second ammonia molecule. That's why you have excess here. So that's your product you form an amide. And that's a sort of important lesson to take away. The way that you can efficiently form an amide is by combining an acid chloride with an amine. Okay, so much for the synthesis. The mechanism for this is a standard nucleophilic acyl substitution. We have this chlorine, we have ammonia, the lone pair on the top, that lone pair can act on the nitrogen as a nucleophile to attack the carbonyl carbon. It kicks the pi bond up, and you get your tetrahedral intermediate. The oxygen has a full negative charge. The nitrogen, which now has four bonds, has a full positive charge. The oxygen slaps back down and kicks the chlorine leaving group off, so that's loss of a leaving group. And here, we have the carbonyl again, bonded to the nitrogen with three bonds to hydrogen. Notice it has four bonds around it, so it has a positive charge. And so to stabilize that, another ammonia molecule can come by. And the lone pair there can act as a base. So it steals one of those hydrogens. The electrons go onto the nitrogen to stabilize the positive charge. And you end up with your amide. And that's the product that we predicted just from the synthesis, recognizing that it was going to be a nucleophilic acyl substitution. Okay, 
Last is C, and this is one we've seen a lot. This is another nucleophilic acyl substitution you see in amide, so you have carbon double bonded to oxygen, single bonded to an amine. You know that the amine is going to be your leaving group. Oops. Amine is going to be your leaving group. What is your nucleophile? What's replacing it? Ultimately an OH. And we, I, I'm not going to draw the mechanism for this one because we have spent a few videos drawing the mechanism for this. This is the acid-catalyzed hydrolysis of amides. So you can go back to the videos to see those. You'll see it's basically a nuclear, an acid-catalyzed nucleophilic acyl substitution. And in general, the leaving group leaves, so you no longer have that NH2. And what this turns into is, after a couple proton transfers, is an OH. Now you also have ammonia in the solution. This NH2 leaves and takes a hydrogen with it. So you take an amide, you, add, you do acid-catalyzed hydrolysis, and you get a carboxylic acid and usually an amine. In this case, you happen to get ammonia, which is like the parent of all amines in the same way that water is the parent of all alcohols. You just replace one of the hydrogens in ammonia with a carbon and you get an amine. And so we saw that, that this was how amino acids break apart. Um, but ultimately, if you take an amide and you treat it with acid and heat, it'll give you a carboxylic acid and your amine. So that's uh, some synthesis exercises with a